So I'm speaking with composer Chad Sider, who started his career working with Oscar-winning composer Michael Giacchino. As an assistant, Chad became an orchestrator on many of Giacchino's projects, such as Star Trek, Cloverfield, Speed Racer, and then going on to write some music for season one of Fringe. Uh, his solo work has displayed his talent and voice as a storyteller, and Chad has established himself as one of the most prominent video game composers on the rise. His familiarity with Giacchino's work uh, led him to score the Star Trek and Lego Jurassic World video games, while also juggling film scoring, uh, film scoring with films like uh, Chapman and Garden of of Eden. Uh, his newest score is to the anticipated video game ReCore, which is brought to us by the talent behind beloved game series like Mega Man and Metroid Prime. Chad, thanks so much for uh, speaking today. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. So I'd love to kind of start off at the beginning, uh, kind of like, you know, what led, what led you on your path to becoming a film, you know, TV game composer? And was it always like a childhood dream? Did you discover the passion later in life? Was there kind of that aha moment going, yeah, I want to do this for, for my career? Yeah, um, I think actually the aha moment came later when I kind of f formulated, uh, I kind of did a bunch of things that grew into that aha moment. Uh -huh. uh, I, you know, I grew up listening to just tons of film music, Jerry Goldsmith, John Williams, James Horner, uh, Hans Zimmer. I, I mean, it was just my passion. Uh, and I, I really got into the recordings themselves and listened to uh, the orchestration and arrangement of the pieces. So I developed this really intense passion for uh, music. But I also played a lot of video games and watched a lot of movies. And, uh -huh. and I always was really into how it played to picture. So I had all these hobbies that involved what inevitably became my my job. Right. Uh, uh, I started like uh, in in middle school, I think, and I, I kind of wanted to just start dabbling with 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 music. And I would take MIDI files on the internet, um, and I'd open them up and just just start changing the instruments. So I'd I'd open up a MIDI file of the uh, the, the Star Trek theme, and I'd say, oh, okay, this is a soprano voice, but let's change it to flute, and I'd change the instrument and and listen to what it sounded like. And uh, from there, it kept growing to where I'd say, oh, okay, I'm changing this instrument, but it doesn't sound in the right range. So I'd start playing with octaves and, and things like that. So I, I kind of started this, this, this little mini arrangement thing going on. And uh, I had a lot of fun with it uh, until I got to... And when I really started writing, I was in high school. Uh, and I started just putting together these, you know, Jerry Goldsmith inspired pieces uh, just to see if I could do it. And I just kept doing it and doing it and started asking for equipment. So uh, really bringing, you, uh, bringing us back to the question, was there an aha moment? Uh, you know, I was in college and I knew I wanted to do music professionally. Um, and I, I, was, I was studying computer science that was, it was going to be my backup job. And I thought, okay, I'm going to try doing music, but I'll have this backup plan just in case. And I guess the <laughs> aha moment came when uh, I just thought, you know, I'm, I'm wasting a lot of time on the backup job. I should just drop that. <laughs> so that was kind of my aha moment where I, I, I said, I'm going to just drop it. And within a few months, I moved to Los Angeles and kind of just got started. Wow. So, and then, you know, what you went on to work with uh, Michael, and I'm sure you get a lot of questions about working with Michael, but maybe on a more technical level, I mean, I mean, first of all, I guess, like, how did you get that? I mean, a lot of composers come to Los Angeles and they're, they want to work at remote control. They want to work at all these kind of, with these big composers. How did, how did you even get a, a, a meeting with him? Well, I, I was friends with uh, his uh, uh, current assistant at the time, ah, okay. actually, uh, and we had uh, we knew each other for a long time, and and uh, through the internet, actually, and I had tons of similar interests, and uh, you know, and I kind of just got to hang around and 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 watch him work, uh, and that kind of grew into a job right. with Mike. So, uh, so uh, maybe on a technical level, like what kind of skills did you learn being his assistant? And, um, and of course, you went on to go work on his scores. But I mean, did you? Is it literally just kind of watching, or did he kind of give you kind of the kind of basic tasks to learn, or was that something you already knew going into it? I would say I started with just 
basic tasks, you know, uh, make this demo CD, uh, pick up dry cleaning, things like that. <laughs> right. Um, uh, uh, and it kind of grew. I it kind of grew into responsibility as you you kind of show your work ethic, you know. And uh, I, I I just made sure I was always working really hard for him, and it was really important to me to to do good work for him because I I had a lot of respect for him right. I, I, and, and I continue to I mean he's a he's a massive influence um, in my life and continues to be uh, it, it was like it was cool because I just while he's working on all these really cool things it was just I had access to this massive font of information and wisdom from him you know he right. just he's got he's got such an interesting uh, perspective on music and art that it, it was it he it, there's just so much to learn so i really appreciated all the time where i could just learn that was the best part about working with michael especially right. so you know a lot of uh, composers of interview they've kind of followed that path and they work with you know as an assistant and kind of kind of go under their wing and so you learn a lot of things about the business you learn a lot of things about scoring i mean and you learn what to do but i think a lot of not many people talk about what they learn not to do. Were there any fundamental things that Michael was like, <laughs> don't do this, or do you wouldn't want to do this, or maybe don't, you know, don't yell at the director or something like that? <laughs> uh, yes, there are lots of things. Um, it's, it's funny. Uh, you, you know, uh, assistant assistant jobs are, are, are tough. Um, but usually I think that when, when they, when, <laughs> when your boss gets mad at you, it's generally your fault. Um, <laughs> Uh, I think that I really learned a lot about how to do good business mm -hmm. um, and uh, kind of things with, with, with like, you know, ego and entitlement, like making sure uh, you keep that in check because when you work for someone else, you work for them. You don't, right. you should never feel like you have an alternate, alternative motive. You, mm -hmm. it, you work for them. So you, you got to do the best work for them. So uh, I think between that and good and learning good business habits and and I think that I learned a lot about that from him. So it kind of I worked a lot of kinks <laughs> out of my own business model that uh, it, that are starting to really help me building my career now. <laughs> right, absolutely. And so I mean, you started doing some video games that were based on movies that you know Michael scored. Uh, how is that process for that? Because I've talked to you know. Someone like Lauren Balfe, who kind of worked on the Rango game that Hans Zimmer did uh, the score. Do you get to use Michael's themes? I mean, what's the process? Is it a challenge to kind of design something that's part of that universe, but also put your own spin on it? Yeah, you know, actually, Michael's been really uh, welcoming to that, uh, and I've really enjoyed that. I've really enjoyed the franchise games, like uh, the Star Trek game and Lego Jurassic World, especially those uh, mm -hmm. really, really fun opportunities. Uh I kind of see it as um, I spent a lot of formative time with with him, right. uh, and and I listened to his music since I was in in college or or even earlier, uh, and I I always loved it. So I spent a lot of my formative years listening and and learning from him. So really, uh, it 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 felt it it just feels natural to kind of work with with his sound, especially after working with him for so long. Um, and then, you know, once uh, Star Trek came along, it was really cool that he entrusted me with going off and I, I, I took his themes and went off and did 120 minutes of music, wow. of Jakino of <laughs> inspired music. But uh, I, I, I think that I also have my own, I contributed my own sound to it, too, definitely. Of course, yes. Yeah. So now now you're, you're, you're taking on this really big game, ReCore, uh, which... Uh, is coming out and what was the musical approach for this when you discuss it at the beginning because i was listening to it and i was actually so pleasantly surprised to hear a sci-fi game score that wasn't 100 percent synth and you know you use a great amount of orchestral instrumentation and everything so was that kind of the goal from the beginning what what was the musical goal for the, the game itself well you know originally um it was going to be a rock score wow. actually 100 uh, <laughs> percent rock um and I said I'd really, really like to have some orchestra in it, and uh, they all, they, they all agreed. And we, we thought, all right, the orchestra is going to be in the back. It'll be like the assistance to the guitars and and rhythm and everything. Uh -huh. But as we kept going and and the game kept growing, um, 
as the artwork unveiled and the, I started seeing, uh, you know, eventually uh, Jewel became a character in the game, you know, right, and right. there there she was. And it start, I started to, to feel differently about it. I started to think, well, you know, this is... This is getting pretty epic. <laughs> like, <laughs> we gotta, we gotta do something here, and and so, uh, the the great guys at Microsoft said, well, well, what do you, what do you think we should do? So I I I wrote a a, a big action track that became uh, uh, the first boss battle in the game, the first uh, spider boss, uh-huh. um, and. Uh, and it, it went over really well with everyone, and and so then I was like, great, this is this can be the direction. It was really really cool. But I really thought that uh, I, the orchestra is kind of like this organic element to juxtapose all the machinery. Right. Um, I I just it was really important to me to give it this feel of space and 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 life that that or, orchestral instruments give it. Um, and and I I feel most comfortable in the orchestra realm. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's my you know I love the orchestra. So it it was cool that I could marry the two concepts together so closely. Right, and you know because I, I do feel like since video games they or video games lend themselves to sci-fi stories. We have a lot of science fiction video games, and uh, you know they do come up. I mean, and they're great scores. I love the scores. They're very synth, but they're synth based and usually heavy on electronics. Um, do you find that as uh, was it just the expected route to go, and that's why you pushed for the orchestra, or what was? Did you, you, I mean, you're talking about, I guess, that kind of the character kind of coming in. You wanted to create the scope and everything, but uh, would it have it? Would it had? I guess, would it have been appropriate to do 100 percent synth score here? Uh, you know, I, I mean, all I can speak to is you know what I do. I so many composers are excellent uh, uh, composers that use synth to great effect. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I really think it comes down to style and how you feel most comfortable telling a story, um, and and everyone's totally different. I I personally love juxtaposing the electronics of Far Eden with with orchestra. I I just think it feels really natural, and I I generally take that approach, um, and I'll try to do things that you know maybe a cool hybrid score will have. Right. You know, and 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 translate them to orchestral or instruments you know uh, record does have some synths in it yeah, like course, yeah. to back up uh the, you know basses and stuff like that and there's some like arpeggios that give it a lot of momentum and and rhythm but uh overall i think it's uh, the acoustic sound for me it's fun to to get that any way i can so we actually have a lot of guitars and a lot of drums you know right. uh, it, it was just a. It was really hard to record to put all those pieces <laughs> together. We were we were recording in some ways all over the world. We recorded choir in Seattle and the orchestra in London, and uh, um, my my good friend uh, Andrew Aversa uh, did a lot of the drums, and he was in Baltimore doing that, and uh, we also did drum sessions with MB Gordy here in in Los Angeles and then wow. Laura and Travia who did the voice is in Boston. So <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> my poor my poor engineer Satoshi Noguchi had to take all these elements <laughs> and put them together. So, you know, they the, doing a score like this has its own challenges <laughs> separate from from that. <laughs> but uh, I mean it came together so beautifully. So I mean congratulations on all that work. I mean it, it's such a it's just a fantastic immersive score it's amazing <laughs> oh thank you i'm i'm so proud of it <laughs> yeah you should be it's great um so i mean kind of going back to i guess scoring for video games i mean since the action is dictated by the player and you know how long a fight or shootout is also dictated by you know the player plays conservatively or runs full action you know it could be shorter or longer is it hard to create arcs and kind of build structure and inject emotion into a video game music kind of which would be a little bit more, I guess, easier on a film with a fixed picture. But, I mean, how do you kind of uh, approach that here? Well, you know, this is something that's becoming more and more important in games. I, th- I think at one, you know, uh, at one point it was a lot of... When it first started, it was literally just writing a, a track and throwing it in and looping it. And right. uh, on ReCore, we, we, we had to avoid that. That 
most modern games uh, that are that uh, most modern games, I think, try to avoid that. So uh, we we kind of came up with this interactive music system, uh, which mostly it's all credited to Todd Mastin, the audio director on the project. Mm -hmm. He he's so good at this. It's it's scary how good he is at this. Um, we thought we we wanted the music to be really dynamic, and there's a lot of combat that lasts three seconds, and then there's a lot of combat that lasts three minutes. Mm -hmm. So the I actually wrote all the pieces you hear on the soundtrack in little ten second chunks. Wow. Uh, the orchestra. <laughs> it was. <laughs> It was a it was a it was a challenge for them. I think they you know they'd play for ten seconds and then stop, and then play for ten seconds and then stop, uh, in in these big long uh, pieces of sheet music. Uh, but the idea is that, uh, and we recorded it all in sections, mm -hmm. so the horns were separate and and strings were separate, so the game can actually reorchestrate the pieces as you play so it could do one pass of 10 seconds and the guitars are playing then it loops again and adds on the orchestra then the choir comes in so it's constantly writing itself as it goes and then based on the intensity level it will add in different uh 10 second loops so it might go wow. on for 40 seconds and and it's kind of it we uh, Todd tried to do it, so it's kind of never the same piece twice, and it's it's cool how it turned out. I, I think I think it's really fun hearing it in the game. <laughs> That's crazy. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, and then what you hear on the soundtrack is kind of the culmination. That's all the all the stems turned on and edited together in a in a cohesive experience. Wow. <laughs> so when you when you were, I mean to write something like that. Uh, were you writing music conceptually, or did you get to actually view gameplay and write music to, I guess, picture in a sense, or was it just kind of like they give you a description? I mean, what were you, or I guess, what was the inspiration for the music? What was kind of pulling the music out of you? Well, uh, I was, I've been kind of on the project for a really long time. I, I was, I was very lucky, and when I first came on, there really wasn't much other than than concept art right, and a right. few, a few builds so um it i kind of got to watch it grow and that gave me a lot of time to to think about far eden and jewel and 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 the re relationship with uh her core bots and mm -hmm. and all these things and i i mean i would just sit there on the couch and just just ponder <laughs> <laughs> trying to make sure i i thought of everything before i started uh writing the music so uh and and microsoft worked really hard to include me in the process of the game making so i i got to be there at all parts of of development uh oh, that's great and got builds of the game that i could get it, and that always helped because then you get it under your fingers you know i got to i got to feel the weight of jewel in the in the environment right so yeah it was really cool to work that way yeah and so, I mean, I was look, listening to your score. It, it's so it's so immersive, and it, it almost feels like a film score. It's very melodic. It has great structures and arcs. And and I talked to other game composers, and a few of them, you know, they always tell you that, that melody should be avoided in video games to avoid kind of that annoyance via repetition that you would hear on a loop. But I, I would also argue that melodies, you know, make music memorable. And I really feel. Your music here is memorable because of how kind of robust, robust and melodic it is versus just you know background music that's meant to loop. I mean, what's your take on melody in in video games? Um, I I I love it personally. I I really think melody is important, but I do agree with that too. Where right. melody can be distracting. I mean, you know, I remember being a kid and playing games, and and my 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 dad would get so tired of hearing the same 40 <laughs> second loops over and over and over again uh -huh. and to some degree that really stuck with me that his annoyance at that cuz i get it yeah. so I, I on recore it was really like the, uh, it's going to be a similar problem where you're constantly jumping in and out of action right and you're going to be hearing these these loops over and over again so I would say when I do games, I try to approach 
uh, melody a little more long form mm -hmm. in its structure so that a melody will kind of develop over two and a half minutes of music rather than, you know, put it into song form. I try right, to avoid right. song form, which, you know, a lot of the old video games were literally that. Um, and I think that really helps to allow the player to, to, to hear the melodies grow and, and it kind of juxtaposes the action on screen. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, if you look back at all the classic video games, but also there's the ones I, I still remember. I mean, you can anyone can sing the Mario theme, but I'm sure after an hour trying to beat a certain level, you might go crazy. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's the tough part, because you've got so many iconic themes that have come out of these, you know, 30-second Loop. loops. Yeah, so exactly. It's, 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 it's tough to capture the same energy, Um and feeling that those melodies gave you. I mean, it, it, the, the fact of the matter is times are just different. You can't do that anymore Absolutely. for the most part. Yeah. Did you ever... When you can, it's cool, but but uh, you got to find new solutions to that same problem. That, and did you ever talk to, I mean, because Michael Giacchino, I mean, he, he started his career in video games too. Did he ever give you, I mean, uh, it was a completely different time too, but did he ever give you insight into how he was doing it back then versus how you're kind of applying it to it now? Yeah, you know, uh, I, I, I got to work on a few video games with him. The right. first Call of Duty game, oh, yeah. uh, a, a, a game that we thought was really cool called Turning Point Fall of Liberty. Oh, man, that's awesome. And, yeah, I love that. And, yeah, and a bunch of other uh, games. So I kind of got a sense of how he approached the, the drama of it. Um, I, I think in the past few years, though, I think the art has really evolved um, and... The, the the idea of interactive music is just so important. So I think it's really, even from when we did those games uh, back in the 2000s, uh, I think it's really changed the the approach to how to do it. I, I did have to kind of restructure my brain in that direction a little more mm. um, and, and learn how to incorporate my style into that. Right, and then it's it's still. I feel like there's still this kind of a uh, thing about video games. That I don't know why people. I think more see it. As, they still see it as toys. I think or like for kids. But I feel like video game music and video games themselves are such an amazing kind of this art form. And I feel like they they are as important as good as film music as TV music. And I think uh, you know we need a, a bigger light shining on them because there's such great work, including you know what you're doing here. So it's yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, I, thank you. I, I, I agree. I think, uh, I think video games are really developing as their own, as their own art form these days. Definitely. Right. So kind of looking at, at the, at video games and what you've been doing there versus what you're doing in film, are there any advantages you like about scoring games, uh, versus film? And is there any, something that maybe a disadvantage that something that video games give you that are like, oh man, I wish it was more like film. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's funny you mentioned this. I, 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 I scored a lot of a film, uh, uh, a few months back and it's, it's so funny how it flip flops for me when I start, you know, I'll work on a game and I'll be like, ah, I'm home. And then <laughs> I will, then I worked on this film and I got to score a whole ton of it and then i thought ah yes i'm home and then i started recar and then ah i'm home so it's like i don't know you know they're just they're just different and it's fun to to score uh, i i i should say it's for i i feel fortunate to live in a time where i'm able to score uh so many mediums you know and i do a lot of work in concert too and they all have their own uh creative and technical hurdles to them. Yeah, absolutely. I know. But, uh, and it, it triggers a different part of your brain. I, I know a lot of composers who don't like to do the same thing over and over again, so it's definitely kind of... Uh, right. Yeah, I find I like to, to move between the worlds. You know, film is is much more structured, and, and you're scoring what's happening to picture. But in games, you, you are scoring what could happen to picture. Right. And, and you're scoring a situation more than you're scoring an actual event. So they're very difficult and it's a very fine line both in production and structure and uh, in creativity. Absolutely. But well, I think you did 
such an amazing job on Recore and, and, and Chad. I just wanted to thank you for your time today. And uh, I'm out of questions for you right now, but uh, I hope we get to do this again sometime. Yeah, I hope so too. Thanks, uh, thanks for the, a great interview. <laughs>